Okay, so we were talking about population density, if you remember, um, in terms of competition and how plants can avoid competition, competition by some trees getting going, so to speak, earlier in the spring while other trees start revving up and needing a lot of resources later in the spring. And so they have this spatial partitioning in when they're maximally using resources and that is called niche partitioning. Niche is basically just a word that describes sort of all the characteristics that are peculiar to say you or me or a particular species of plant or organism or animal. So my niche in life, so to speak, is uh, omnivore, um, urban dweller, plant lover, um, tree doctor. Okay, that's my niche. That's, those are a few characteristics of my niche. Um, a plant niche might be uh, high pH um, with low soil development profile and um, exposure to long extended periods of freezing temperatures in the winter. Whereas another tree's niche might be poor soil development, tending towards acidic pH and zero, no freezing temperature exposure at all. Okay, so basically that's a niche. Um, I hope, hopefully that's useful. And so when you're sharing the same niche, you're gonna compete with similar resources. Interesting things happen, at least in organisms that can move around, unlike plants. And when competition becomes really intense, because either resources become limited for some reason, like uh, maybe a road is plowed through a, a habitat and because of the road moving through uh, there's a loss of soil and there's a loss of plants and maybe there's some toxicity in the adjacent area this area is adjacent to the street and that street just happens to go through uh, um, uh, right through the middle of a, a mountain lions or a wolf or a coyote or whatever their habitat and so now they have to, to cross this dangerous road in order to find a mate or to get to their favorite spot for whelping their pups um, so that would be one way that you'd have increased competition because space or resources have been reduced another way you can have competition and, and these aren't mutually exclusive they can happen together is that you have a massive population increase in let's say um, hedgehogs because the mountain lion population goes down but at the same time and so the hedgehog population skyrockets it explodes then maybe under those conditions alone they start to experience a lot of stress because their voracious appetites and need for homes and places to have their offspring and take care of them and have them develop becomes more limited just because there's more hedgehogs. Or maybe you've got reduction in their predators and at the same time there's a huge track of houses that goes in right in the middle of their, maybe even a little town or a subdivision and a suburb is expanded. And so they lose all that habitat they originally had for pups and food and protection, right? So now the resources are even more limited. Interestingly, what happens oftentimes, which I'm seeing as I drive on the road here, is an increased amount of stress and that stress can express itself in organisms as aggressive behavior it can express itself as anxiety and a, and a reduced functioning so that reduced functioning will often lead to as we've seen with things like pandas in captivity an 
the inability to mate, successfully mate. And so, you know, some would argue that this is nature's way of controlling populations, right? The population gets too dense, there's not enough resources to meet the needs of that population, and so they're not able to reproduce as well because of anxiety and hormones. Oftentimes, anxiety changes hormonal levels. In fact, I would say probably always consistent or prolonged period of anxiety will mess with the hormones of any organism because hormones are a stress, um, are a type of stress response, chemical stress, which is stress response. And that results, that can result in fewer offspring. And so then the population numbers go down and that um, anxiety eventually gets reduced because you've got resources increasing as a result of the population going down. If the population doesn't go down, or maybe there's a huge population explosion at the same time a predator is lost, okay, because it was an abundant food supply the year before, you can have these experiences in which literally it seems like the creatures have lost their minds. So they will begin to behave in ways that are actually detrimental, not only to individual survival, but to population survival. And this can lead to that thing that I mentioned before called an extinction spiral. That extinction spiral could be local. So you can have in ecology local phenomena and you can have global phenomena. And for example, so phenomena is just any sort of event or thing that happens. So you could have a local or just a single population in a small area go to extinction because too few resources, too many organisms. Or you could have a in global half a mile, phenomenon. Use the right lane to take the US 340 North ramp to West Virginia 51 West, Charlestown. Or you could have a global um, extinction spiral. And that just depends upon how big the populations are and how well they connected they are, whether or not they will impact each other and cause these kinds of global um, extinction spirals. All right, hopefully that was interesting. Use the